Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to paint a still life of some vegetables in watercolor. This is a great exercise to practice shading with watercolor paints and also mixing colors. The first thing we're going to do is start drawing out our vegetable shapes. So I'm outlining an avocado shape lightly in pencil here. It's kind of similar to an egg shape, kind of rounded oval with a little bit of a point on one end. Next behind that I'm going to throw a bell pepper. And so it has a couple bumps on top and bottom with a stem coming out the center of these bumps. We're just doing general easy shapes to start here. We're going to add most of the detail with the watercolor paints but this just gives us a helpful guide as we're painting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a rounded tomato shape, kind of a longer circle with a little indent in the middle and then I'm just gonna throw some leaves coming out the top. And then behind that, I'm gonna fill the extra space with an eggplant. I've been really into cooking with eggplant lately, so why not throw that in there? And that's kind of a larger jelly bean shape, just kind of poking out from back there. And I'm erasing some of my lines to make room to throw some cherry tomatoes in the front, so more ovals. These are just really simple shapes. And again, we're going to add most of the dimension as we paint. This is just going to help us know where to start. And you could always make an arrangement out of the stuff you have in your fridge or fruit bowl and draw from that as well. Now I'm going to start laying down the base colors for each of our vegetables. So I'm putting a decent amount of water in the paints for the base layer because I don't want them to be too dark. We're going to work from light to dark. So I took a green here and kind of a cooler green without a lot of yellow in it and I laid that down first for the avocado using a medium-sized round brush. And now I'm going to go back to the eggplant. And for the base color of the eggplant, eggplants are purple, but they're so dark they're almost black, so I'm actually laying down a dark gray first. So I've taken my Payne's Gray, it's called the shade of gray I have, and added a decent amount of water to it. And again, I'm just outlining the shape I have made in pencil and then filling in with brush strokes going all in the same direction, following the shape of my object. And you'll notice I left a little bit of drying time in between before I went right to the area where my eggplant and avocado are touching. If both colors are still really wet, they will bleed into each other, so you just want to make sure that your colors are dry in between before you have them touch each other. Um, you can always use a blow dryer too to speed along the process, but they tend to dry pretty quick. Now I'm going in and adding my cherry tomatoes, again kind of staying away from the eggplant right away to give it a chance to dry. So I'm just taking a watered down red and just using a circular motion to follow the shape of these little cherry tomatoes and fill them all the way in solid. And taking that same red, I'm going to fill in my large tomato, just carefully tracing along some of the edges first so that I can have a nice outline, a nice clean edge where it isn't running into my other shapes that are in front. And then I'm going to go ahead and just, using the same medium sized brush, fill it all the way in. And now I'm going ahead and adding some yellow to my bell pepper. You can make your pepper whatever color you want, and I chose to make it yellow for some variety. 
And again, just doing the same thing as we did with our other vegetables where just all in the same direction, just making smooth, even strokes to fill it in solid. And now I'm just going ahead and using my round brush, you may want to switch to a smaller one at this point, it's up to you. I'm just filling in the green base for the stems and leaves. And I did this last just to give our vegetables a chance to dry. And now we're going to begin to add our shading. We have all our base colors down, so these are the lightest values that are going to be on each of our vegetables, and we're going to work our way up from there, building deeper colors. We're also going to need to use a color wheel today as we shade. There's a couple different ways you can shade when you paint, but one of those ways is to create a dark, neutral tone for the shadows by mixing together two colors that are crossed from each other on the color wheel. So for example, if I'm going to be shading my tomato, which is red, I might use a little bit of gray, but then I would also mix it with green. Or I could go with some red with a little bit less water in it and mix some green into that. And when you mix those opposite colors, they make a neutral gray brownish tone depending on the tones of the two colors. So you're going to see that visually as I demonstrate here and this is something you can definitely play around with on your own as well. So now I'm going ahead on my avocado with some gray first. I've added a little bit of water but not as much as when I use the gray for the base of the eggplant for example. It's pretty dark still. And after I've outlined my edge that's going to have the shadow on it, that bottom edge, I'm stippling, which means I'm just tapping up and down with my, the tip of my brush to make this kind of speckled texture. And this is going to give us the look of the avocado that has that rough surface on it. And I've gone ahead and filled the shading in almost entirely to the top because avocados are so dark. And now I'm going in with some red, the opposite color on the color wheel. And while the gray is still wet, I'm just spotting that red directly over it as well. And they're really blending and bleeding together pretty much on their own because they were both still wet, which is fantastic. So now I'm gonna leave that for now. And I'm going to go to my eggplant with the gray also. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in along the edge wherever it would be dark. This is where it helps to have a reference either right in front of you, like I mentioned before, um, physical fruits and vegetables you may have lying around, or you can look up some photos in an image search. But that way you have something right in front of you so you know where to place the shadows and you have something to go by. And you can also paint along with me right now. But if you want to keep practicing in the future, a reference is definitely helpful. I'm just carefully tracing along any vegetables that overlap in the foreground. And I'm filling it in mostly dark because again, eggplants are very dark, but I'm leaving a little highlight right up top. And that'll be the reflection from the shine. And now I'm going over to my bell pepper with some gray and again filling in wherever there would be shadows. So in between those little divots, both on the top and on the side. And also the areas near the bottom and behind the other vegetables where the light wouldn't be able to go. And the reason we're using gray but then also putting another color over it is because if we were to leave it just with the gray it would create a shadow effect but um, it kind of dulls down the colors as you can see and um, food like this especially fruits and vegetables are very vibrantly colored so you don't really want them to be dulled that looks a lot less realistic so we're using the gray to get the aspect of the darkness but then by putting 
the opposite color on the color wheel in with that shading as well to make a neutral. It's a little more vibrant. And this is something, again, you can play around with and test out yourself to see the differences. And now I'm going along to my tomato. I'm letting that dry a little bit on the pepper for now. And I'm going along and adding some gray to my tomato. Again, just along the bottom and behind where the avocado overlaps where there would be a little less light. And as you're doing the shading, anywhere where you have a really harsh edge, you can go like I'm just doing and rinse off your brush and go along that edge of your shading with just some plain water and that will buff it right out and make the transition really gradual from dark to light. So now I'm going along and also adding some gray shading to my little cherry tomatoes. And then using the plain water just to blend afterwards to get rid of any of those harsh edges. And I mix a little bit of green into my gray just so it's a little bit hard to tell because it does come across as a neutral when you overlap with the red, but since green is across from red on the color wheel, I mixed a little bit of green this time in with my gray. And now I'm taking just some plain gray and I'm kind of just making a base for this arrangement, something to ground it within the space. I'm going to keep it pretty simple and leave the background mostly white, but I still want to be able to ground our painting. It just makes it look more finished. So I've gone and outlined with some gray, and now I'm holding my brush at an angle and I'm just streaking outwards. And I've rinsed my brush off and I'm going with just some plain water and drying that gray paint out further and the further I draw it out with the water the lighter and lighter it's going to get near the edges so again we have this really gradual dark to light with it being darkest right underneath where our arrangement is setting and getting lighter as we go out into space Just continuing to add a little bit of that grounding behind the arrangement as well just bringing it up a little bit further so that the vegetables sitting in the back too look like they're grounded in space And now I'm going to continue to build. We have our base shading down, and now I'm taking some purple, and I'm going over the grays that I have with purple. So we have a nice dark gray base now, and that is going to make us get the deep blackish purple that is realistic for an eggplant rather than a bright fuchsia kind of color. And so I'm going ahead and shading over almost everything with this purple. And then just using some water to blend the purple lightly into our highlight area that we left. And now I'm taking some red. You can see the shading was still a little pastel. That was still just our base, even though we added the gray and green shading. It was still very pastel. With watercolor, you do a lot of layering, and that's how you get those deeper and brighter tones, is when you keep going over with layers of color. So I have some red with just a little bit of water in it so that it's very bold, and I'm just tracing over my shading with this bright red, and then I'm taking some water and going along the edge and just blending and spreading it out to fill in the rest of the shape. 
So now the only place where our lightest original value is showing through is over the highlights where we'd have light reflecting off of the shiny surface of the skin. Now I'm taking some of that same green that I originally used as the base for the avocado and same thing, I've just this time only mixed a little bit of water in it so it's very dark, not near as diluted as before. And I'm tracing over my shading using the same stippling technique to maintain that texture. And you're starting to see how all the groundwork we did with our base colors and our base shading is still showing through. Um, with watercolor, since they are transparent, every layer you put down shows through no matter how many layers you put on top of it. So it really is a process of building. And doing something like this is good practice for getting better at watercolors. Avocados are very dark, so I'm filling in almost the whole thing with this dark green. Before I just go with some water and lightly blend some of the areas that I left lighter, which are our highlights. And now I'm taking some yellow, and again, I only added a little bit of water this time, so it's very bold. And I'm tracing over my shadows here with this bolder, less diluted yellow. And I'm still just leaving the center of those different sections open. Peppers are also very reflective on the skin. So I'm leaving the insides of these different sections not filled in with the bright yellow for now because we're then going to take some water and lightly blend around the edges of this bolder yellow that we've made, but leave those insides light and that's going to give us our really three-dimensional effect, make it look really realistic with the reflections on it. And it really makes it jump out in space and makes it look like it pops off the page. And I'm taking my bolder red again with just a little bit of water in it and tracing over my shadows on the cherry tomatoes. And I'm just leaving a little bit on top with the lightest value still showing through. And then I'm going along the edge again in water and blending it so that we just have a nice shine on top where the light would be hitting it. And I'm just doing that same process on each of the tomatoes. And now the final step is to finish up the stems and leaves on some of our vegetables. And so I'm taking my smaller detailed round brush and I'm going ahead with some darker green and just layering over that base color with my green that just has a little bit of water in it so it's a lot darker. Really the same tone that I use to layer over and finish up the avocado. And so I'm just going along the outside edges of each of these little details dark 
and I'm rinsing off my brush and blending along those dark edges with just the plain water so that we have a nice transition from dark to light without any harsh edges. And now our still life is complete. Thank you for watching. I hope you try this at home. Like I mentioned, it'd be really fun to put together your own arrangement and try this out, or you can follow along with me. Either way, I hope you have fun and keep painting.